Before we start this episode, let me tell you that I'm a big advocate of Japanese watchmaking. I've been a huge fan of the Seiko brand, the Citizen brand, the Orient brand, and all of the little independents that come out of Japan. Today I'm even wearing my Citizen Homer from 1976. But today's episode, I get to talk about something that I'm actually a little bit disappointed about. Well, at least if the rumors are true. Citizen is celebrating their 100th anniversary, and they're releasing an absolutely spectacular watch that's pretty important to me. The problem, Citizen, I think we're going to fight over something. I think this watch is stupidly priced. Welcome to another episode of Pocket Watch Time. My name is Patrick W. And on today's episode, we're going to talk about the Citizen brand and a maybe pet peeve of the Citizen brand that is new to me because Citizen is celebrating their 100th year anniversary. And I mean, that's an awesome milestone. Congratulations, Citizen. They've been making pocket watches, wrist watches for over 100 years, and they make a great product. They've made quartzes, they've made automatics, they've made manual wines. They've truly made a watch for every occasion. And for the 100th anniversary, they're doing something very special. They're re-releasing, or at least making a new version of a pocket watch. Obviously, this is pocket watch time. I'm a big horology nut, but I love pocket watches. And for a brand to make a new edition of a pocket watch to maybe entertain the masses and show people that pocket watches can be cool again, I think is so cool. Here's where the problem lies. One, it's a very limited edition. So they're only making a hundred. And that's fine. I actually love limited editions. And the fact that they're only making a hundred kind of makes it more interesting to me in terms of, hey, I might want to pick one of these up. Here's where the real problem comes. I've heard rumors on pricing. It's obscene. So before I get into some of the negatives, let me tell you all the positives. First, this watch is absolutely beautiful. It's a titanium pocket watch, and that's kind of cool. I don't know why other brands don't really make titanium pocket watches, but they just don't. And it's kind of a neat nod to Citizen because I think Citizen was one of the first, if not the first watch brand to make titanium watches. So titanium is definitely a metal that Citizen enjoys, loves, and promotes. So not only is it a modern material in titanium, it has a crystal in the front and an exhibition crystal on the back, and both of those are sapphire. So you've got modern glass. You've got a relatively strong metal, a very strong you know, glass that doesn't scratch easily. There's a degree of water resistance. They don't really explain what that is, which makes me think it's probably marginal at best, but hey, even if it's 30 meters, it, it means you could walk outside in the rain and you don't have to necessarily be afraid of your watch. And that's kind of good. In modern era, you do want a watch that you can actually wear and not worry about too much. Getting to the other bonuses, it has an absolutely gorgeous dial. I'm not sure if it's a paper dial, which I know Citizen sometimes does, or what the real material is, but it looks like a paper dial. And it, it's kind of reminiscent to a snowflake and a Grand Seiko with a texture and a pattern. And, you know, you don't see that very often in a pocket watch. So really cool, really beautiful. I'm impressed. And of course, the back. So the movement, it's absolutely beautiful. It's related to the Citizen 200 series, or the Citizen watch, which is actually made by La Joux Pere, or at least the movement is. La Joux Pere is under the umbrella of Citizen, so this is where I guess they make their fanciest styled, decorated, all the goods for a movement. And they, they didn't skip anything here. The 200 series movement that's for a wristwatch, well, you know, it's a wristwatch movement. It's a little bit boring. It just kind of has the normal plates of a wristwatch. They 
redesigned that movement to make it into a more pocket watch aesthetic. So instead of the big three quarter plates or a full plate like you'd see in a wristwatch, this has finger bridges or at least somewhat finger bridges, more like a pocket watch. And it's absolutely gorgeous. So I'll finally get down to the issue I'm having. <sighs> the price. They don't post on the website what the price is currently, but I've heard through several sources, and I hope these sources are wrong. I've heard that this is going to cost $9,000. Oh god, that's insane. The 200 series found in a wristwatch, it's still an expensive watch. They put that at a price tag of about $6,000. So that's still probably more than I would pay for this pocket watch. But if they're truly bumping this up to $9,000, I'm sorry, citizen, I think you guys are out of your minds. And I'll put that into perspective of why. Obviously, it's a beautiful movement. It's a relatively mechanized machine movement. So you guys can make that pretty video talking about how unique and interesting it is. I mean, it was made by a machine. So it's just, you know, it's, it's a machine made movement. It might be a little bit decorated. It's got some Cote de Genève on it, but so does most every other movement that costs a fraction of this. So beautiful movement, nice case, new technologies, pocket watch, 100 made. It just, I, I don't see where that price is. And here's the biggest reason why. As a pocket watch collector, you could get yourself a full solid gold best of the best pocket watch by, let's say, a brand I love, which is the Waltham Watch Company. There's a particular model called the 72, and there's a particular grade called the American Watch Grade. This watch is a coveted star of the pocket watch community. You could buy that watch in a solid gold case for 4000 5000 maybe 6000 in excellent condition. You're still paying less than you'd pay for this citizen pocket watch that was made by a machine today. So I just, I don't get it. And to put it into another scope, I've seen Patek minute repeater pocket watches go for 10, 12 grand and definitely normal Patek solid gold pocket watches going for less than 10, less than nine. So I just don't understand where this pricing is coming from. And that's kind of, disappointing to me because as a super pocket watch fan and a citizen fan and a Japanese watchmaking fan, if this was reasonably priced, I would scoop this up in a heartbeat. I mean, even if it was a little bit not so reasonably priced, but if it's $9,000, that's absurd. That is well past the point that any modern day pocket watch or even almost vintage pocket watch should cost. I don't own a pocket watch that costs anywhere near that amount of money because you can buy almost any pocket watch for that money. And that's disappointing. I know they're only making a hundred. I know it's rare. I know it's limited. I know it's a special movement made just for this, but I'll use one more example. I bought a Seiko that has a particular movement in it that was made for only one Seiko watch and it was for Seiko's historical collection of 2000. This is a movement that was produced in the Grand Seiko studio, and as I said, it was only found in this one watch where they made 3000 editions of it. So there's a lot of them, or at least you know a lot more than 100. I don't know what this cost when it was released. I'll probably put it up in the description here because I'll look it up, but you can readily pick these up now for I've seen them as low as 600 and as high as 1,000, and they usually rest somewhere in between at about 800 bucks. So, and it's in a sterling silver case. So you get a precious metal, you get a Grand Seiko made Seiko movement that's a limited production for just that pocket watch, and it costs under a grand. And I'm sure it costs less than a grand when it was new. So that's kind of the measuring stick that I think citizen is missing. If Seiko slash Grand Seiko movement can come in at under a thousand dollars in a silver case, 
what the hell is a $9,000 citizen doing in a titanium case, which is kind of cool. It just, it doesn't compute. So let me know if I'm wrong. If you think that this is a complete justifiable purchase and justifiable price, maybe I'm just old and silly and just off my rocker, but I think this is inappropriately priced. I think it's an absurd price. And I'm kind of mad at the brand for doing it because it just sounds like a money grab. And I think that puts people off for the idea of collecting pocket watches. And obviously as a pocket watch super fan, I would like this to be something that could bring people into the hobby. Let's say they didn't make only a hundred, they made a thousand or two thousand and it was affordable. There might be a lot of people out there that would say, hey, that's a really cool pocket watch. I want to get one. And that would bring more people into what is a hobby of watch collecting and pocket watch collecting. So not only are they burning bridges with adamant fans like myself, but they're not creating new bridges with new fans. And so those are my two pet peeves of what I really dislike about this upcoming release. But as I said, let me know what you think. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel, give it a subscription. We just hit 50,000 subscribers, so thanks to everybody who watches these videos and particularly those who leave a like, leave a comment, do everything that helps the algorithm. But thanks for watching everybody and I appreciate the support. I'll catch you in a new video. If you enjoyed this content, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel. Please leave a like or maybe even a comment or a question. The YouTube algorithm loves it when you do that and it helps the channel. And speaking of helping the channel, I've got two avenues where you can donate to the channel. You can join right here on YouTube by becoming a YouTube member, or you can follow the link in the description and join my Patreon. Thank you, I really do appreciate it.